Salutations, you're in the Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. Hope you've all had an outstanding week and that the start of your weekend has been solid as well. I wanna kick the week of February 17th off with some metal. And we're gonna talk about pigs, 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 pigs in this record, Land of Sleeper. They released that on the 17th. This is the fourth studio album for the British Outfit and their follow-up to 2020's Viscerals. So happy to have discovered this band. You see that name, it's tough to ignore that. You think of the creature and you think of the number and all the, the different things that both of them have come to represent in different cultures throughout religion and art. <clears throat> it's fascinating. You could probably just do a massive deep dive on all the combinations you could come up with. But, you know, as far as the pig, you think of, I mean, goodness, I think of the way it's portrayed in Animal Farm. I think of uh, Piggy in Lord of the Flies. You know, you think of the way that some cultures cherish and honor the animal. Some, you know, abhor it and repudiate themselves from it. And it's the same with the number seven. Number seven has come to represent so many different things, good, bad. Uh, I mean, the the scope of all that is is pretty fascinating. So this uh, this band name, uh, Pigs Times Seven, uh, is, is a pretty common <laughs> common name that people use to refer to these guys keep it simple probably do that for the remainder of the review but i love this outfit um absolutely fascinating the the homage that they're paying to you know that that cornerstone of metal music and black sabbath british band i know i feel like the genre really you know born out of that country so it's great to see you know outfits like this come along and carry the torch but there's such a dynamic range in their sound and you think about metal taking off and the different bands that, you know, I think of bands like Deep Purple, I think of bands like Cream, who people probably wouldn't necessarily, you know, classify those bands as metal, but you can feel the influence and in how they built that sound, how metal artists, you know, were listening to to guys like Eric Clapton and uh and and working with that. And and what's really cool fundamentally, you know, I and I highlight Eric Clapton because it's it's all about the blues. And I listen to, you know, Pigs Time Seven and this album land sleeper and their stuff in general i feel like it's just so rooted in that delta blues and it's just that you get that big sludgy sound the big chugging riffs the production on this thing is outstanding and you talk about the different not just metal but rock and roll influences those you know some of those earlier bands that i mentioned but i you know i think of bands like sleep and melvin's think of electric wizard think of you know some of those more stoner rock outfits like queens of the stone age think of a band like the datsuns out of australia more of that driving hard rock and sound you talk about that motorhead is a is a big influence that i'm feeling throughout this record you know even even in some of the slower moments you just you get just that homage to the riffage and the cool thing about this band too and they talk about it, you know, when you're writing music this heavy and it's it's going to be a mood record. This thing, <laughs> I wish I could have gotten this thing out yesterday, but I threw it on and just I tried to do it early and I had to to get a few hours under my belt, wake up a bit to to get this thing out because it's it's almost ridiculously heavy. It's not uh, it's not detrimental, though. They're they're able to push that boundary and uh, and really just fill this record out. Eight tracks, 41 minutes, a ton of fun to listen to. But there's that that bit of camp and that levity that the band talks about that you can't really take yourself too serious when you're making music like this, approaching the thematic content and and bringing music that's, I mean, really this hard. Again, there's there's my, some of you might listen to this and just think that it's absolutely ridiculous. I hope you don't. I hope you really give this thing a good chance because I think, uh, I think once you maybe get past those few moments of laughter and, and digest this, you'll realize that with some of the, you know, really cool melodic psychedelic elements at play, you know, and I think of a song early on, you talk about the uh, the early influences in the 60s. Think of a song like I Want You, She's So Heavy by the Beatles and the way that that thing just spirals out, but all the different moods and elements in that track. And there's, you know, great little piano pieces on this thing, all sorts of fun elements that work its way in and out. And uh, it's really just a nicely done record. Arguably the best project this band has put out to date. You know, I, I really can't say that for sure because I haven't had a chance to listen to the other stuff, but I like the way that their their sound starting early off was pretty loose and pretty jam based. And I like how, as they've continued to put out records, the, the compositions are structured and very dialed in. 
And I think that they're still built in a way that as far as the live show, it'll give these guys the opportunity to, to open these songs up, you know, and roll with some roll with some riffs or roll with some breakdowns and solos and, you know, really do whatever they want to do and just have a heyday. Uh, I look forward to hopefully being able to check these guys out because it's uh, these guys seem like they would put on a hell of a show and just be a ton of fun. This thing opens up with Ultimate Hammer. <laughs> it's a great song title right there. Uh, just the uh, the the role that this riff has. It's like I love the way that it opens this thing up. Get this drum roll that comes in and then it goes to work. It's got this really nice punk driven feel. So, again, I'm like I'm liking that feel of Motorhead. I'm liking that feel of the Datsuns. So that heavy, like Black Flag even, you know, a little bit too. But, uh, you know, lots going on. You get those fuzzy guitars. I really like the metal feel. Um, you know, big sludgy breakdown on this song. Get that Sabbath feel in there. And it'll, uh, you know, there's just like, it, it's impossible to, to to not feel that Sabbath influence on that on that breakdown. And I'm really, I'm loving the way that this thing starts off with that track. It leads into Terror's Pillow, your second song. Psychedelic build on the intro. This song hits hard with just a, a good, steady, mid, mid-tempo mid stoner rock feel. Really, it's just a, a nice way to develop some pace and build into big rig. Uh, I, I'm probably my favorite song on this album. It's um, just a big, heavy metal feel. Back to that Sabbath. Um, the verse picks up the pace from more of that Motorhead feel, so I like the balance in this thing, just moving back and forth between that dynamic. And then this thing gets super weird. That riff slows down really hard. You get that just like almost kind of like like whatever whatever drug influence you want to use but it's just so sludgy and just i mean like you're just trudging through a swamp and then it builds into this groove and it's almost kind of jazz driven and that's what i talk about as far as those those psychedelic influences and that outside stuff that that make their music so fun and playful that that bit of that bit of levity that I spoke about, whether it's the lyrics, whether it's the music, it's it's finding a way to to lighten things up. You know, you think of the horror genre, for example, and there's always, you know, kind of like one liners, a little bit of humor there to to lighten things up because you can't just have an hour and a half or an hour, or, you know, whatever amount of content with just solid doom and gloom. And and I really I love that element of their music. The Weatherman is your fourth track. Uh, we're going to get back into that little bit of darkness, uh, lyrically, musically, pulsating synth on this thing to open up a little bit of that. Uh, it's one of the few moments where you're getting kind of a, an electronic feel in their music. It's not something that they're doing more, but again, it's it's great on this track. It, it creates a, you know, just a, a bit of difference uh, in the in the track run, and I'm, I'm loving it. I love the jarring feedback and the excellent drums that come on this thing. It's really gloomy. Uh, and minimal. I like that dynamic as well. The vocal feels like a chant. It's it's got this almost kind of uh, you know mono like monastery type of you know monk feel to it. It's uh, it's and it and it's super creepy as well too. But and then once this thing hits, um, it, it's it's just gonna give it to you. It backs off a little bit. I really like the way that um, you know once it backs off, it comes in a second time and then really takes off. Uh, really great way to end the first half of this record. Um, and I like the dynamic. Mr. Medicine is going to open up the B side. Your fifth track is Dope Fuzzy Riff. And this is where I'm feeling a band like the Datsuns. If you're not familiar with them, go check them out. But just these like hard, like hard hitting, uh, high tempo, fuzzy riffs and, uh, and just really in your face rock and roll music. Definitely, I mean, call it speed metal if you want to, but I think that. There's so much else going on that it's tough to really give it that metal classification. Pipe Down is your sixth track. Big groovy chugging riff on this thing. Fuzzy, hard and sludgy breakdown. Um, I dig the vocal performance as well on this one. I will argue, though, that um, like the first go around, this is where I like I started to need a break. Um, and, I, and I would say maybe it wasn't because I was in the headspace to handle a heavy record like this. But I'll also say that... It, Pipe down as good as it is and as direct, like as much as I like the rock and roll feel, it almost kind of felt like the album was getting ready to hit this monotonous pace. And, and there was a moment here where I was kind of concerned with what the rest of this record would be like, but we get Atlas Stone and this thing goes to work quick after an opening riff. And I really like the way that the music feels and heavy around that riff. Uh, it's going to ride that for about two and a half minutes. And then this was the moment I was waiting for. You get this bass riff that just it really takes over the track and it's and it's freaking cool and i love it and it, this thing just takes off around that it's um like i said it happens at the perfect moment you talk about the track listing and the thought that goes into building a record not just writing songs but the whole experience and that's one of those moments where i really just i'm loving this band the the production in their work the thought that's going into 
the the track run uh just a damn fine experience ball lightning your eighth and final song is a uh i mean if you're not familiar with ball lightning you should look that shit up it's it's absolutely crazy um you'll be blown away by those videos if you're not familiar with it but i this is a cool track it's moody it's simple um you get this like little one note piano riff and this is just another one of those examples i was talking about kind of more of a psychedelic feel and um spooky as well really very moody and evocative and then uh the chorus it gets nice and heavy and i really just i, I like the the build in this song the way that it fills out and it's a phenomenal way to to end this record these guys if uh you know if, if you're in the mood for a good metal experience we're going to be hitting a little more too we're going to talk about in flames as well this weekend wanted to, to to dip back to last week and check out that record but this is a vinyl please for sure and i think even if you're not even if you're not a big metalhead, I think that there's this is enough of a melodic experience, and I think there's enough cool guitar work and another other there's enough alternative and other rock and roll influences at work here um, that create such a fun dynamic that I think a lot of you really will enjoy. So we're gonna vinyl please this thing. Hope you find this review helpful. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel, do all the things to help Keith MB and I blow this project up in 2023. Tune into the live show at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday nights and stay tuned throughout the week for more album reviews. We will see you next time on the Beat Sessions.